My name is Howard Henry Hartzell. It's called it's called Dandelion Green. If you like if you like Spanish, you can use a substitute for your spinach into dandelion greens. You don't pick the big leaves, you pick the small leaves, which is a lot a lot more a lot more a lot more tender. And you cook it with uh, you can fry your bacon, your jaw the bacon up. You can use uh, bacon, cut the bacon up in little pieces, and you can use the uh, bacon grease to put in with your dandelion greens. They should be about anywhere from about three to four. You, you pick the smallest leaves you can find, not the big leaves, because the big leaves are well, way, too, way, way too tough in all, all to cook. When there is not enough food around, dandelion greens will help you in the long run. Because what he's doing is putting the vitamin D, E, and G in there. Because that's what the human body needs. They have, but, but anytime you use outdoor plants, you have to carefully wash them good with boiling hot water, then bleach them with cold water. Anytime you use leaves from the outside. As you're, as, as you're pairing the dandelion green, you can cut up. I, 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 I dice your I, I, onions up. You can put carrots in there, and you can put all, all, also celery. And with your dandelion green, but each and every person is differently. But one thing you'll learn: do not put no seasoning into the dandelion green. At the end of the joke but their own seasoning, cause a lot of people can't handle salt. My, both, of my both of my grandmother taught me to cook. How to make homemade applesauce and how to make a bean pie. You, as you fix your, your, uh, your soup beans, and, and now you pre boil your beans so you can get rid of the, uh, the excess gas is in every bean. And you use a plenary soup bean, a little bit of ham or a little bit of bacon, and you carefully, if you have enough left, you can fix it as a pie, but you have to smash up a little bit of the beans so you can make a, a, a bean pie. But you swirl it down, it's not a bean pie. It tastes actually like a custard pie. One thing you add in there is a little bit of bacon or and some diced onions. And that's about all you need. You swirl it and my mom used to fix a bean pie and, and I wound up eating the whole thing. She didn't get a bite of it. Just, uh, there's certain apples which you can cook and to make apple, apple pie and apple sauce. And you use uh, mostly a little bit, bit, bit uh, uh, about a spoon and a, a dish, I mean, table, a uh, large size spoon. And you cut one half of it and put a little bit of Brown, a little bit better brown sugar, and and a, 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 one half of it is cinnamon and brown sugar. But once you start eating it, you can't quit because it is really good. And you also can mix in with that your uh, applesauce pear. Mash up the pears so it'll blend in with the with, with, with the apples and, and, and a little bit of the pear. It's really good. I can fix you a, 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 a uh, now my grandmother didn't taught me that, but I learned that on my own how to make a German German stuffed cabbage. German stuffed cabbage. 
You go to the grocery store or a fruit market somewhere, get the biggest leaf, but make sure when you get the cabbage home, take off the outside leaves off and have some Polish full-length sausage about that big around, I mean about that long and about that big, about that big around, and you put all your leaves down, like overlap them, have your toothpicks ready, then you put your Polish sausage in the middle, German and some sauerkraut, onion, carrots, and celery, and if you want to add a little, little bit of, um, trying to think of it. Oh, 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 oh garlic. Just put a little bit, bit of garlic on each side, then close it, leaves a lot like this way, right? back and forth, then use your toothpick. Put it in the oven for an, uh, 45 minutes to an hour. Oven should be preheat at 350 degrees. And it should be a, just about, a little, almost a little bit over a foot long, and it's good enough, about that big around, for one full meal, just one of them. As my, my mom was growing up, she was getting up in years, she came to my, my, my bedroom, knocked on the door and said, Henry, I'm not going to cook anymore. I said, what do you mean you're not going to cook anymore? I'm getting tired of eating my own cooking. I'm going to let you cook from now on. Because I cook like my, both of my, grandma, my, both my grandmothers cook, the old-fashioned way. Don't put no seasoning in it. Let the individual put their own seasoning, their own salt, whatever they, they think they need at that particular time.